Hey guys, this is going to be a review of A Shadow Bright and Burning by Jessica Cluess. Cluess? I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce her last name. This is going to be interesting because I'm going to film a video review of this, but I'm also going to write a review on my blog. So I got this book for review from Blogging for Books, so I need to write a blog post, but I also feel like talking about it in a video, so we're going to do that too. I think I'm going to go ahead and go through the things that annoyed me about this book first because I have a very, like, strange set of feelings about this book. The main character Henrietta is told that she's like the prophesied one, um, the chosen one, pretty early on in the book, and then proceeds to not have much of a reaction to that. And this is one of those things where I don't really want to judge the character for not acting a certain way, because it's like, well, everyone would react to finding out that they're the chosen one in a different way. And like, try to tell myself that. Yet yeah, it is kind of weird to me in the book how she seems to have almost no reaction to being the chosen one. She finds out she's a sorcerer. She didn't know she was a sorcerer. She knew she had some sort of magical powers, but she thought she was a witch. They're witches, sorcerers, and magicians are three different things in this book, by the way. So she thought she was a witch, which would mean that she would be put to death if her magic was discovered. But then she's told she's a sorcerer, and so she can like learn how to control her magic and everything. And not only that, but she needs to learn because she's going to have to defeat the seven ancients who are like these demon sort of things who are attacking England and only England for some reason. I didn't quite get that either. I know um, that the seven ancients were summoned, but and they were summoned from England, but I still don't quite understand why they're focusing exclusively on England. And they did mostly talk about England, though there I know there was one mention of them attacking Scotland, I think. I can't remember if Wales was mentioned or not, but by and large, they only talk about them attacking England, and it's very clear that they're not attacking um, mainland Europe is talked about a lot and how mainland Europe won't help England um, and America has talked a lot about being a safe place. This book takes place in the Victorian era England by the way. It's also interesting because Queen Victoria is in the book and it's a world where magic exists but like everyone knows about the magic and like the sorcerers work for Queen Victoria which is very interesting. I have a very strange mixture of things I don't quite understand about the book or things that annoy me and things that I really liked about it that have all led me to not really understanding how I even feel about this book. The main character Henrietta is like the only female surrounded by guys. The only other females that have like any sort of, there are like three female characters that have any sort of role. Um, Lily is uh, Henrietta's handmaid, I guess is what you would call it, like the maid that's specifically in charge of Henrietta, and she ha plays quite a significant role, but not like that large. And then one, she's being trained with six sorcerers, I think, all of them guys, because she's the only current female sorcerer. And um, one of those guys has a sister who is in like two scenes? Three? I think she's in three scenes in the book. And then Queen Victoria, who is talked about but is only in two scenes, I think. So by and large, she is surrounded by men, and which is somewhat frustrating. I did like how the book tackled gender um, and how, like, Henrietta is most definitely surrounded by sexist people. I don't want to go into spoilers, but a lot of stuff does happen surrounding her being the only female sorcerer and not everyone being happy that she is a female sorcerer and that it is dealt with and I liked how that was dealt with. It would have been nice though to have more female characters play a significant role in Henrietta's life and I'm hoping that in future books that maybe there will be. It looks like Lily is staying in the story. I guess that's kind of a spoiler but I have a feeling Lily will be in the sequel. I'm also hoping Queen Victoria will play a bigger role in the sequel than she did in this one. Mr. Blackwood was the guy that she's being trained with who I liked the most and his sister I'm really hoping plays a bigger role in the next book as well. And I feel like 
there's a good chance that all three of those female characters will play a larger role, but that may just be my wishful thinking. Speaking of the guys that she's with and everything, she's I'm almost positive that there's six of them. That works out correctly in my head, unless I'm forgetting someone, there's six. Um, I liked four of them and hated two of them. One was the Italian guy. They're all English except one guy who is Italian. Um, and I can't remember his name, just like everyone else. But I hated the Italian guy, which I'm fairly positive I was supposed to, so that's okay. But then Magnus. Um, he is the first of the guys that you meet, and he is very conceited and very annoying, and he instantly becomes the guy that Henrietta bonds to immediately. And so you see him more than any of the other guys. And I hate that because I can't stand Magnus. I can't, like, I so very much cannot stand Magnus. It just annoys me so much because, like, her and Magnus become close and I don't like them together. And, like, there are four other guys who are just, would be such better friends than Magnus. Seriously. She does spend time with the other guys. It's just nowhere near as much time as she spends with Magnus, which was kind of frustrating for me. While we're on the topic of like the guys and everything, there are two things I want to talk about though. One, I have no idea who she's going to end up with. That's kind of an exaggeration. I do have an idea, but I'm not as sure as I feel like I typically am. Um, there were a few points where I was pretty sure, but then there's this certain other thing, like there's this possible plot twist that I think the author may be building up that would change who I think she's going to end up with, and I'm really unsure about that, and I don't want to talk more about it because it would involve getting into spoilers and everything. I am unsure because obviously there are the six guys that she is learning to be a sorcerer with, and some of them I think we can automatically rule out as being her love interest. Like, but there's also Rook, who's her childhood best friend, who comes to London with her in the book. So there are a lot of potential love interests, which annoyed me immediately going into the book. Like as soon as she got to the house, obviously there was Rook, and I figured there was going to be at least one other guy. But getting to the house and there being like six other guys, and like I knew that it was going to be like something was going to be built up with more than one of them and I just was really frustrated about that. Still I am kind of frustrated about that because I don't necessarily think it needed to be done that way. Mostly I'm frustrated because of how important Magnus is in this book like as a love interest and everything when I hate him so much. Also though of those six guys two of them I am fairly positive are gay and in love with each other but it's not explicitly said in the book. Enough happens that you really can't not figure it out. Like, they're definitely in love with each other. It That has to be the explanation. There's no other explanation that makes sense. But I'm really hoping that's more explicit in future books in the series because in this one there was just, she already doesn't spend that much time with them because she's off with Magnus all the time, which was a real shame because I really liked both of those characters. But when she is with them and with both of them at the same time, Henrietta makes some comments about how they're acting that make it really clear that there's something between them. But Henrietta's not even like I can't even tell if she doesn't understand what's going on between them and like she's oblivious to it or if she just doesn't explicitly say it in the book but either way is weird for me because she should be able to figure it out. I know this takes place in Victorian era England but really she should be able to figure it out and her just not like saying what's going on, what's clearly going on right in front of her was kind of annoying too. So I'm really hoping that's more explicit in like future books and it's made clear that yes there's definitely something going on between them. Because the way it was kind of hinted at but not explicitly said in this one was really annoying. Looking over my notes that I made of things I wanted to talk about, I, I kind of got carried away and went about everything out of order, but I think I covered everything in my notes, even though it 
went in a different direction than I had planned. Basically, um, I really like the book for certain aspects and I'm really annoyed by certain aspects and whether or not I like this series I think is going to depend on the future books and the direction that the story takes um, and right now I'm not sure if I believe that it's going to go in a direction I like or a direction I don't like. I really have no idea. I really do like some of the gender dynamics with um, with Henrietta being the only female sorcerer and her having to like overcome sexism a lot in this book and probably future books but at the same time I do want more female characters around so she's not constantly surrounded by guys 24 7 and I really kind of want less Magnus at this point I don't know how to like get rid of him in a way that would make sense but Blackwood is definitely my favorite character. I liked all of the characters except Magnus. I would really like to see more of all of the guys she's supposed to be learning with and also more of Rook because for being her childhood best friend I kind of feel like he was not in this book as much as I would have expected. Um, I would really like to see more of all of them instead of more Magnus. We'll see what happens in book two, but Blackwood especially I really liked and I really like the friendship that she manages to form with him in this book that I really wish had gotten more attention instead of her friendship with Magnus. I don't want to get into spoilers but I am optimistic that we will get like more of her friendship with Blackwood in the second book so I'm hopeful about that. Overall it kept me entertained enough that I do want to read the second one and see how it goes but I could also see myself not wanting to continue the series after the second one depending on how the second one goes. We will see and I will see you guys later. Bye!